Hello everyone, and welcome back to our next episode in the Three Star Rift Clear series. We are deep in the midst of the Sigma Rifts, and we have a couple of fun and interesting rifts to go ahead and try out today, four of them to be specific, and those four rifts are the ones that you see outlined on your screen right now with the arrows. So let's go ahead and jump right into the action. And before we do, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please feel free to do so by hitting the subscribe button down below. It's free and easy, and I really appreciate it. So let's continue. The first rift that we will be looking at today is the level 34 Extreme Trial Rift, where the main objective is to defeat MODOK. In this particular iteration of the game, the extreme attacks deal a lot more damage, so you'll be cycling through those very frequently. Meanwhile, every other piece of damage that you can do is negligible. Um, so you see a decrease in the damage that's done from standard attacks, ability attacks, synergy attacks, pretty much anything else that's not extreme. It'll still do some damage, but it's chip damage and really trivial. However, this pairs really well with the synergy that you can apply to your team where you regain a portion of your health for damage dealt using extreme abilities, which really comes in handy for the second criteria or the second star clear of this rift which is getting through it with no team members incapacitated because not only are you gaining health back for every extreme attack that you use but you are getting an increased amount of health gained back because you are dealing increased amounts of damage as well now you do have a two minute time restraint to go ahead and get this taken care of but as long as you target modok with your extreme attacks when you have a stagger down you can really burn through that very quickly especially because the extreme attack gauge does charge up relatively quick. So as you'll see here, we get started off with Modok. And the most annoying thing about Modok as the fight that he presents is his movements are a bit sporadic. He dashes about the main area where you can attack him and he alters between projectile attacks as well as homing, uh, or not homing attacks, but melee attacks that sweep out in large areas around him. So as you'll see, we already have all four of our characters up on their first bit of the extreme attack. We now have got Modok through the first part of the fight and into his second phase. And the second phase can be a little bit uh, frustrating, to say the least, because he has that soulstone imbuement where he will regain some of the health if you stay too close in his proximity and he also kind of draws you in so what you'll want to do is combat roll away from modok as he throws that attack out now wolverine is really quite efficient at these types of fights because he deals a significant amount of damage with his adamantium uppercut attack there and just like that we have modok into the or has his stagger bait and just like that we have Modok's stagger gauge depleted yet again which gets us down to about his last third of health now with Gambit here I've switched over mainly because I've run out of MP for the attacks uh, that I would use Wolverine for but Ultimately, we are looking to go ahead and get the remainder of his stagger bar burned down, and that deadly deal is pretty good at getting the stagger bar chipped down just because it's a lot of attacks simultaneously one after the other. At this point, I'm a little bit pressed for time, and I didn't quite have the stagger bar de depleted, but we go ahead and just unload all of our extreme attacks, and that gets us the clear with all three stars met. The second rift we'll be having a look at today is a level 36 difficulty rift. It is a wave style rift akin to the same type of rifts that we do to test out new characters uh, in our character spotlight series. So it's something we're very familiar with. You need to not only defeat those 200 enemies in hell and the area that you spawn into is just not conducive to fighting at all uh, due to some environmental factors which we'll see in a minute. Um, but the opponents aren't overly difficult and you can easily clear out not only the 25 powerful enemies just with the sheer quantity of them that show up 
Um, but if you strategize your attacks very well and focus on characters that have wide area of effects, you can even go through and finish that in the three minute time frame very easily. So you'll see here that there is the area of attack, the environmental damage pools there in the middle that proved to be a little bit problematic. But at the end of the day, we mainly focus on keeping as many of these electro webs and deadly ground uh, set up, or dangerous ground set up by Gambit to increase our damage output. And at this point, I'm resorting a little bit more to Wolverine just to get some increased damage on a lot of the bigger characters or bigger opponents. And the cool quirk with this fight is as you defeat the Mindless One enemies, you will start to spawn in some explosives that you can then use to your advantage, which that's always nice when you have additional equipment that will allow you to increase your overall damage output. Now we've got this mighty enemy here that we've finished out with Gambit's Deadly Deal. And as you can see, we've got some explosives starting to spawn in. But my main priority again is rolling around these poison pits as best I can and setting up as much of the dangerous ground as physically possible. And it does stay out for quite a while, especially when you have it ranked up to its full potency. So really at this point, we're just keeping an eye on our enemy damage counter and Switching back over to Wolverine as he is very, very powerful in terms of knocking out the mighty enemies, both their stagger as well as their health pool uh, with that adamantium upper cut and the falling aerial attack as well. Uh, I really, really enjoy Wolverine and wouldn't go anywhere without having him as a member of my team for any sort of quest that I would go down. Now, we are getting into the time frame where we need to be a little bit concerned about clearing this out in the three minutes. So I go ahead and get the different extreme attacks used to burst down any enemies in the areas of the opponents that I have on hand. And at this point, I've switched over to Thanos just because he not only does a very substantial amount of damage, but he synergizes very well with the other members of my team as well, as a lot of his attacks just have a very big area of effect that they overtake. Now at this point, we've got Miles, and we're using him to kind of clear out a few of these characters, switching back over to Wolverine as a bunch of the mighty enemies have shown up, and we've got to burn through their stagger bars. And just like that, we are down to the last 20 or so characters that we need to take on. And as long as we continue to use our attacks efficiently, we shouldn't have any problem with getting this within that three minute time frame. It's just a matter of grouping the characters together and we've got one final round of these extreme attacks that we can throw out to push us over the edge and get us the three star clear within that three minute time frame. The third rift that we will be looking at today is a level 40 ultimate rift, Big Trouble, where we face off against Sandman and his powerful allies. Now, most of the opponents that show up during this fight are just your standard grunts. However, we do have the destroyer armor from the story quest, which if you remember, the destroyer armor takes menial damage from regular attacks unless you're souped up with the rainbow iso 8 that gets dropped by different opponents uh, or different grunts that you face off against, which luckily that is still the case, otherwise this fight would not be clearable within that 3 minute and 10 second time frame. Uh, but it's really pretty straightforward, and the only other thing you need to keep in mind is you need to get through this fight with one or fewer teammate incapacitations, but as long as you prioritize your attacks well enough, that shouldn't be too much of a concern. So Sandman right off the bat, he spawns in, and he's the only one initially that you need to pay any mind to. So to assure that we can do this in a timely manner, I do go ahead and burn out all of those little grunts just so we don't really have to worry about anything else. And as soon as we use these concrete suppression cannons to solidify Sandman, we can really start going to town on him and maximizing the damage output. Now at this point, I, it's way too early on in the fight to employ my regular strategy, which is one of using the extreme attacks, but as long as we're using the synergy 
attacks with our team, we can get Sandman well below even the first half of his health, which does trigger in that Destroyer Armor. And the Destroyer Armor is quite a bit more mobile. He charges through uh, objects that we normally wouldn't be able to just pass through, which can be a little bit frustrating. And my main priority here is because there's so much going on, I want to simplify that. So I'm targeting Sandman as much as I possibly can to assure that we can just get him taken out. Now another annoying thing about the Destroyer Armor is he has very big area of effect attacks, especially with some of those uh, big recticles that take up over half of the stage area. And that's just not something that is fun to have to deal with. Now, we've just about got Sandman down, and with a few more of the Animantium Uppercuts, we will have that finalized. So at this point, we need to focus on getting the Destroyer Armor taken down. And you really need to maximize your team members that are imbued with the Rainbow Isolate that gets dropped by the Grunts, or you're not going to make any headway at all. And that doesn't even include souping up your attacks for not only your synergies, but also your extreme attacks as well, if you can get that activated on your characters before taking on the Destroyer here. And you'll see once I've got Wolverine imbued with that Rainbow Iso Ape, it really is a lot easier to take on the Destroyer and get his health bar chip down. This isn't quite enough to get him taken out, but one more pass should give us more than enough of what we need. So at this point, I've got the Venom Strike from Miles, just because it, or Miles has a bit more MP to work with at this point in time, which is why I was focusing on those attacks with him. And with a few more well-placed attacks, we'll have the Destroyer Armor's Stagger Bar completely depleted. And now we just need to focus as much as we can on using those synergy attacks. But it does get a little bit more difficult where a big and fair chunk of the damage output is gained not only from your extreme attacks, but using your extreme attacks while you have the Rainbow Iso 8 and viewing your power. But a few more well-placed strikes here and we will be able to get the Destroyer Armor down which is within that 3 minute and 10 second time frame, netting us the 3 star clear for this rift as well. Now the fourth and final rift that we'll be having a look at today is another level 40 difficulty rift. This is a countdown rift where we need to um, traverse through Shadowland. And this specifically takes us from the entry area onto the Electra fight. We start with 40 seconds on the clock for this fight. But instead of meeting this time frame with additional time on the clock or so many minutes and seconds as a lot of these other rifts tend to be, the criteria is a bit different. And it's one of my least favorite segments because taking 80,000 damage or less during the course of the fight can really be difficult to obtain. Um, so you do want to, in my opinion, prioritize a run where you are blitzing through just to that last fight so you can get things finished out. Uh, and then go back and run it again to defeat 70 enemies in that run. So I'm going to show you my strategy to take that 80,000 damage or less in the run in the clip that we look at right now. So as you'll see, we have, uh, we're spawned right out the front gates here. And unfortunately, there are a lot of AIM soldiers that spawn in through this. And the green AIM soldiers are really frustrating in particular because they not only deal persistent damage, but they stagger you with those clouds that they put out. Now, Miles is very efficient at getting through these areas. I do stop in this area to restock up on some time, so I'm not as concerned or pressed for any time constraints. Now, another thing that really makes this difficult to take 80,000 damage or less are these aim snipers because, well, they take deadly aim and can knock out a significant chunk of your health before you even know it. So at this point, I've gotten around the major point uh, or the major part of damage that we would have to be concerned about. And as soon as Spider-Man or Miles Morales gets up to this landing, we can spawn in the rest of the characters that we left behind, getting us out of the danger area of taking more damage than what's absolutely necessary. Now at this point, 
I'm really trying to focus on not switching around my characters too much as, as far as I can tell, anytime you take damage or you swatch, swap onto a character who has taken damage, they do affect the overall damage counter that you're trying to minimize. And that was showcased a little bit in the previous video in the Juggernaut fight that we had to take on, which was really quite painful and particular of how they wanted it to be done. So we've just about got the Outriders taken out from this portion of the quest, which opens up the final area that we need to clear out. And we're well below the 70 opponent takedowns for this portion of the fight. But that's not the main thing that we're trying to focus on at this point in time. So let's move on to this fight against Electra. And luckily, the opponents that we're facing off against don't deal any increased damage or have any other quirks that we need to be aware about. So at this point, I've switched over to Wolverine so we can burst down these priests that are supporting Electra as the Adamantium Uppercut does wonders of taking that on. And as soon as we've got this last uh, priest down, we can then focus on bringing down Electra, which is not the easiest task, but it's an early enough boss fight where you can really learn the nuances of her attacks and plan accordingly. So at this point where there's so many opponents running around, I do switch over to Gambit to get some dangerous ground set up and provide some continuous covering attack damage to really cut down on any of the additional damage that we may be taking from these opponents as they spawn in. And at this point, I really just want to focus on burning down Electra and getting her health uh, knocked down as quickly as we possibly can. Now, the one thing you do want to keep in mind is she does have those exploding shurikens, but additionally, whenever you activate your extreme attacks, you become completely invulnerable to attack damage coming in from opponents, and that is enough to net us the clear here in the time frame, and we do have our 70 enemies defeated, giving us the three-star clear. So that's going to do it for today's video. We have nine of these rifts cleared out, so we are making some very good progress. We will go ahead and do four of these rifts in the next episode, specifically the rifts that do not have anything to do with character-specific objectives. So make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on so you can catch wind of when that video comes around. It will be Wednesday of this next week. So don't be afraid to check back in and we will be eagerly awaiting your return so we can continue getting these three-star clears. Until then, thanks again for watching and you have yourself a great rest of your day.